Elements is Kling's brand new multi-entity consistency feature that allows you to take multiple images and merge them together to generate a single video. It's extremely powerful technology and I've noticed that this is very useful for anything fashion related. You can essentially generate a virtual model and have them wearing real items of clothing or AI generated clothing. They can be posing with these clothing items or showcasing different fashion items as well. If you guys are doing anything fashion related with AI, you definitely need to check out Kling Elements. So I'll show you my best practices as well as some useful use cases. So let's get started. From the home page, click on AI videos. Here at the top, make sure it's on image to video and now you'll see that there's a brand new tab over here called Elements. So with Elements, you can upload up to four images and you can see over here under hints, they even give you some examples of you know images that can be merged together to generate a single video. Over here is where we type in our prompt, which is required and also very important, but I'll be giving you the best practices to get some very good results. And then over here we have the settings, you definitely want to leave this on professional mode. It is going to consume more credits, but you will get better results. The duration, you can do five to 10 seconds. Our aspect ratio over here, we've got widescreen or even vertical. This basically allows you to choose how many videos you want to generate at once using all of those elements in the prompt. And then we've got negative prompting as well, which is a way to tell the AI what we don't want to appear in our video. Now, I don't use this at all. Everything else gets used. But now that we understand that, like I said, it's as simple as dragging and dropping in uh, images over here and then typing in a prompt. So let's start with curating our images. So first of all, you are going to need a model. You can even use a picture of yourself, but in my case, I'm going to generate my own virtual model. So I've noticed that the best images to use of models is portrait images. So any image that's cropped in quite close to the face with no distractions in the background. So if you have a white background in this case, it's going to be perfect. However, you're not limited to that. You can also use images where the face is a bit further away and it's still going to work. And even the aspect ratio of the image doesn't matter that much. You can use a vertical image or even a horizontal image and the AI is still going to analyze that face and generate a video with it. This is important because Elements is extremely sensitive with prompting. If you are using images of people at different ages, like let's say an elderly person, you have to include the term elderly in your prompt to get a good end result. I left out the term elderly and the model that got generated looked a, a lot younger than my reference image. As soon as I put the term elderly, I actually got the correct result. So keep that in mind. So here's a neat little trick. If you guys have access to X, you can use Grok to generate images of virtual models completely for free. So this is the prompt that I'm using. So you can see I said a front facing close up shot of an Asian female model. And then I've specified what type of hair she has as well as the color of her hair. And this is optional, but I've also specified the color of her eyes. This is important. I said studio photography on a white background. And then it gives me awesome images like this. And then if I want to save this image, I just click on these three dots and click on save image. But another awesome thing that you can do with Grok is that you see over here there's the option to edit the image. If I click on that, I can just type something and use natural language like I can say her hair is dark blue and then when I click on that to generate it, it's going to give me another set of images. Now it does change the face a little bit but it managed to make her hair dark blue. Or I can take this same image and type in something like she's wearing black sunglasses and it will actually apply sunglasses onto her face. So this is just a way to generate images of virtual models and even edit the images using natural language completely for free. If you guys want to go the paid route, I would actually recommend using freepick.com and you can generate images of models using Google Image N3, Mystic or even Flux to get some really nice high quality images of models. Or you can use Midjourney, which is obviously a favorite and a very popular option, uh, which has very nice aesthetics for generating these images of models. The portrait image that you decide to use is extremely important and this is a good example. So in this case, I've got a portrait image and my model is actually wearing an item of clothing within this image. Now this can actually confuse the AI because in this case, I'm telling the AI that she needs to be wearing this garment, but the AI is essentially merging this garment with this garment to give me this end result, which is incorrect. So what I need to do over here is crop in a lot closer to the face to eliminate this black garment from being present. Now Kling already includes a crop in feature. If you hover over the image, you click on this icon and it brings you over to this page. So I'll, I would need to move this up so it's cropped in a lot closer to the face. Even if there's a little bit of the garment showing over here, I'm still going to get a much better end result. 
So once I have that and click on confirm, it will crop the image. So again, this is what the result looks like, like this. But if I crop in that image, all right, where it's cropped in closer to the face, you can see the garment fits correctly. So that's how you essentially troubleshoot that, unless you're trying to create some type of fusion. Uh, but usually the best practice is to have this image cropped in closer onto the face. So now it's time to curate those items of clothing. This can be jackets, pants, or dresses, glasses, hats, <laughs> whatever you can imagine. You can put it onto your model and it works quite well. It's actually very accurate. So you'll notice with my examples that a lot of the items of clothing are isolated, right? It's just the item of clothing on a white background. And I've noticed that this is when I get the best results uh, because the AI knows how to analyze that item of clothing and place it onto the model. So of course we can generate our fashion and there's two prompts that I want you guys to try over here. The first one is a lay flat image. So this works quite well. Uh, it's actually used with displaying real fashion items in the real world. It's essentially laying an item flat onto a surface. And in this case I said a lay flat image of a black bomber jacket and it automatically knows that the background is going to be white over here and I've got this isolated garment. So images like this where the garment is isolated are going to be perfect. The AI will be able to analyze this and place it onto your model. Another prompt to try over here is you can specify the item of clothing and then say that it's on a white background. So you, you should also get some isolated images like this uh, that are going to be perfect for your model. Uh, now you can use Pinterest. Pinterest is incredible for inspiration. And let me just go back over here. And of course you can try those prompts on here. Like in this case I said a Gucci jacket on a white background and then it's given me images like this. So you can maybe just grab some uh, items of clothing from here and try some of them on your model and see how well it actually holds up. Uh, the AI is actually very, very accurate with transferring over details, even with complex garments and complex patterns. It does a pretty good job. Uh, but again, images like this, perfect, right? When you click on this, uh, it's a rabbit hole that gets uh, unlocked and you've just got tons of images uh, or with these items of clothing that are isolated. So make sure that the items of clothing are on an isolated background to get the best results. This is why it's important to have isolated items of clothing. If someone's wearing the item of clothing in the image, but you also have an image of the model, it's basically going to fuse these two people together. And sometimes that person can even appear in this video. Uh, so it's just best to have that item of clothing on its own so that the item of clothing just gets applied by itself onto your model. Also pay attention to the length of the sleeves. In this case I had the sleeves that were a bit longer than the actual waist and it ended up giving this guy what looks like a crop top uh, but the moment I used another image of a bomber jacket where the sleeves were almost the exact same length as the waist it gave me a much better fit and exactly what I was going for with the end result. Shoes can be quite difficult to get right with elements. I've noticed the best results I got is if I'm showcasing a shoe as a single item. So if I've got an orbiting shot showcasing the shoe or maybe I've got a, you know, just the image of the shoe and then I create a prompt where I've got a model wearing high heels walking on a fashion runway. That's when I get the best results. But as soon as I've got a model wearing the shoes, I think maybe elements gets confused with trying to display too many different types of elements. It doesn't really copy over the shoe exactly. Uh, it just generates a shoe that's based off the image but it doesn't really look like the image. So in my opinion it's better to just you know supply other items like the jacket, the pants, glasses or whatever you want and then with the shoes just prompt it like you can prompt a pair of black high heels or white sneakers or something like that. I think that's a better way to get shoes to appear in videos where you have an entire outfit present. Uh, that just seems to be a limitation that I'm noticing. If you guys know a better way to display shoes, then let me know in the comments. At this point, you've got an image of your model and items of clothing. Now I'm going to recommend for your first try, just upload an image of the model and a single item of clothing. So that can be a jacket, a blazer, a dress, a cardigan, whatever you want. And then we're going to be talking about prompting, which in my opinion is the most important aspect of getting elements to work correctly. It's very important to tell the AI how these elements relate to each other. Now with elements, prompting is very precise and also very sensitive, which means you have to be strategic with the way you structure your prompts. So this is how I structure my prompts with elements. Number one, I specify what my subject is. I specify the item of clothing that they should be wearing. I mention the action and the environment. So by having all four elements in place, I should get a good end result. So in this case, I've obviously got an image of my model. 
and then an item of clothing. So with the prompt, you can see over here, I said a close-up of a female, which describes my subject. And then I've said wearing a fashion outfit. Now I've used the term fashion outfit loosely uh, because I've noticed that this works quite well uh, with just applying a garment onto a character. It doesn't reference any other characteristics. Like if you wanted to be very specific, you could say that she's wearing a black leather jacket or a black dress. And the AI is going to apply those characteristics onto that garment. So the way the gravity affects the clothing and those cloth, phys cloth physics uh, might be different if you are a little bit more specific. But just by using fashion outfit, I'll get a good result. Now also over here, you can see I've specified the action. So I said she's walking on a fashion runway. And then because I haven't supplied an image of an environment, I'm basically telling the AI what the environment should be. So I said she's inside a foggy cathedral. So by having all of those prompt uh, elements in place, it gives me an end result like this that looks amazing. We've got our model, we've got the item of clothing and everything that we can see over here with all of these buttons and even the gold cuffs. And she's definitely walking on what looks, uh, looks like a fashion runway inside of a cathedral. So the AI has adhered to this prompt perfectly. So you can see what fashion outfit does. It applies my garment onto my model, which looks perfect, but the AI also automatically generates what the bottom section should be. Right? I didn't specify what this should be, but because I said outfit, it automatically knows that it should generate something over there. So if you want more control, you can obviously just upload an image of pants, uh, but you'll have to adjust the prompt because now I need to specify uh, what the top item is. And in this case, I said uh, she's wearing a blazer and then I said and white pants. So now it's taken the white pants and the blazer and put it into one video. We've got our model over there and we've got also this foggy cathedral. Now I also like the fact that it tucked in this blazer uh, into the pants. However, I didn't specify that. So maybe a re-roll uh, would give me the full garment present over here. But this is just another way to control what the bottom should look like by supplying an image of the bottoms. So of course, have fun with swapping out garments, but keep in mind that, you know, this is AI and sometimes it's not perfect. I mean, the jacket over here looks excellent, uh, almost like a one-to-one -one replica, but the pants, I just didn't understand uh, how to transfer that pattern over to the pants. It did put flowers on here, but it's just not the same image. Uh, and then obviously her hair for some reason also got longer. So keep in mind that, you know, sometimes your results are just not going to be perfect. And that's just the nature of AI. Uh, but you can see over here, I said she's posing in a field of white tulips during sunset. And this is the video that I ended up getting. So now I want to show you various creative use cases that you can try with elements. Use elements to showcase individual fashion items. So this can be someone putting on a pair of sunglasses or you've got an orbiting shot of a sneaker on the beach or you know someone's holding a handbag or someone's got a hat on their head. Elements does a fantastic job with just showcasing individual items as well. This means you can give your model something to hold so why not let them hold a green alien plushie because why not? <laughs> Get creative with your model selection. Remember, your models don't have to be human beings. They can be animals or they can even be these strange looking hybrids. Uh, so you can go wild when it comes to model selection and see what creative results you can end up getting. You've got a virtual model, so create some promotional material. They can be wearing real items of clothing or AI generated clothing. Elements does a great job with generating environments from text, but if you want to be more specific, you can obviously supply an image of an environment so that you can actually control what the environment looks like in your end result. So you can try this, try and generate two people in one video. Sometimes it's not very reliable, like it might only transfer over the likeness of one person's face and completely ignore the second picture that you've supplied. Uh, but I managed to get like the garments to transfer over correctly. I was just having some issues sometimes with the faces, but this is something you can try. So if you want two models in one video, give it a try and see what results you get. You can use elements to showcase the back of a garment and I found a way to do this. Uh, the most important thing is you'll need an image of a side profile of your model. So this is the prompt that I've used to generate side profiles. So you can copy that as well. Once you've generated an image like this, you are good to go. You upload that as well as the back of your garment and then type in this prompt. Now the most important part of this prompt is a back facing shot. The rest of this prompt, you can adjust it as needed. Once you've got all of these uh, elements in place. Uh, you should get these awesome videos where it shows the back of the garment and your character literally walking away. So you can see here's another example. 
and I think these videos look really nice. Here's one where the character is not walking away but instead just posing. Uh, but this is how you can showcase the back of a garment. So that's going to be the end of this tutorial and you guys can obviously see how powerful Elements is when it works well. So give it a try and let me know what you guys think. Obviously Elements is not limited to fashion. You can use it for product placement and design. You can use it uh, for storytelling if you guys are creating films. Uh, the fact that you can have consistent Elements being generated in a single video makes Elements extremely powerful. So play around with it and create some magic. Anyway, you guys are super awesome, so stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials, and goodbye.